In today's video, we're going to talk about things I wish I knew before buying Chanel. This is more to set your expectations if you're looking to start your Chanel collection or think about buying your first Chanel bag. These are things to be aware of because buying Chanel is not like buying from Coach or YSL. I could also do a video about things I wish I knew before buying LV or Hermes. So leave me a comment if you want me to do those. In today's video, I will mention six things. Before we get started, remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Let's start with number one. In general, the iconic Chanel bags don't fit as much as I hoped it would. So this is the classic flap in the white caviar with 24 karat gold. She's vintage. They don't fit much because of the double flap. Let me show you the double flap. When you open the bag, you'll notice the first flap and the second flap. And this second flap is called the double flap. There's two reasons for the double flap. The first was a security thing. So back when this bag was invented, pickpocketing was a common thing. Coco Chanel invented a double flap, so it'd be harder for people to reach in and grab stuff out of your purse. And the second reason is so that the bag will retain its structure. And the reason why that is so important is because this bag is over 25 years old and it looks brand new. By looking from the side, you can totally see the double flap. The downside is the bag doesn't carry as much because the double flap takes up some room. This is the medium large classic flap, and it also has the double flap. This bag is slightly bigger than the small size, and it fits just a little bit more. There's two other bigger sizes in the classic flap line, which is the jumbo and the maxi. Those are also double flap. Although both of those bags fit more, they're significantly heavier and harder to use because the flap is bigger and longer. So it's harder to open and close. So what I recommend before making a decision on buying a Chanel bag, if your friend or somebody you know actually owned the bag that you want, ask them if you could try fitting your essentials in that bag. And of course, be nice about it. Don't put your loose powder and eyeshadow in someone else's bag and it gets eyeshadow all over it to see if that bag will fit your bare essentials. My lifestyle consists of me driving a car. So I personally don't pack a lot of stuff in my bags. So fitting just the essentials is not an issue for me. But if you're used to carrying like the LV Speedy or the Hermes Birkin, then you'll definitely feel that the classic bags don't fit much. Note there are other Chanel bags that fit more, such as Chanel tote bags and the Chanel 19. But in general, you may feel that it doesn't fit as much as you hoped it would. Let's get to the second point. It's actually difficult to buy the bag you want from the store. Sounds crazy, right? I feel that Chanel wants to preserve their exclusivity. And so in order to do that, they limit the stock. This is the trendy CC in the small size with the rose gold hardware. First of all, of the four stores I reached out, only one store actually had it available. They only ordered 16 of these. So after those 16 sold out, that was it. This is the mini rectangle flap. And each store only has two per color available for sale. So Chanel has six collections per year. And it's hard to know what items came out for that collection because Chanel.com doesn't show all the items. Chanel releases the runway show like six months before the collection is released. But the runway show doesn't show all the items. So it's difficult to know what bags are going to come out. By the time you see the bag as a review on YouTube or a photo on Instagram, it's usually too late because the bags have already been sold out. The way I find out which bags are coming out is to watch videos that other YouTubers made of leaked photos. And those photos often spring up on Instagram. There's an Instagram account I do follow. And I assume she might be like a VIP person who gets these low resolution, low quality pictures text to her because often they're really fuzzy. Sometimes there's no price and the colors are very generic. So it's really difficult to see what the bag's really going to look like. But if there's something that I think I want and I'm 51% sure, I'll take a screenshot and I'll ask my main essay like one to two weeks before the collection launches just so I can be put on the reserve list. The other thing is from my personal experience, the essays are not able to tell you all the styles that will come out on the upcoming collection or future collections. Some tell me they won't get that info until like a week or two before the collection releases. 
seeing that Chanel doesn't show all available items on the website, it feels like to me that they do this on purpose. Maybe to be mysterious? To be more exclusive? So tell me what you guys think. Leave me a comment. I mentioned earlier that Chanel has six collections per year, and each collection has a set of colors that Chanel produces. Some of these colors are not sold or available to stores in America. And in the US, we have department stores such as Saks Fifth Avenue or Neiman Marcus. In the UK, I think that's like Hertz. And they buy certain colors from each collection. We also have standalone Chanel boutiques, and they decide which colors to buy. So this can mean that a department store or the boutique can have anywhere from two to six colors available for a specific style for the particular bag for that collection. If you're not able to get the color in the bag style you want, in general, Chanel doesn't repeat the same colors except for in the classic flaps, the black and the beige clair. And if you missed the top handle mini in the baby pink that came on the 22P collection, it could be years before Chanel does another baby pink. And at that time, the baby pink could be more cooler or warmer tone or slightly darker or slightly lighter. And also don't be surprised if the essay, the sales associate is not very helpful. Not saying all Chanel essays are not helpful, but some aren't. I also had this same experience with other luxury houses such as LV and Hermes. So I don't think this is just a Chanel issue. In general, I find more higher up on the exclusivity scale, the, the less helpful the essay could be. It shouldn't be that way, but this can be true. I plan to do another video just about sales associates and if we need more than one. So stay tuned for that. I just want to say that you'll get more helpfulness from like a St. Laurent or a coach essay. I think that that could be the case because St. Laurent and coach, their items are not as limited in number. The next point is a brand new bag from Chanel could come with defects. I bought a few new bags straight from the stores that have defects and I ended up keeping them. I'll link the videos in the description. So this new Trendy CC came directly from the store with its own defects. And this Trendy CC in the walk also came with its own defects. I ended up keeping them both because nobody knows if Chanel would ever release these in the rose gold in the future. I find that some people take it so personally when the bag that they reserved has defects. I understand the disappointment and the frustration. And at these prices, Chanel should do better quality control. But that is something that the essay has no control over. Whether the item has a defect or not, the store will only get a certain number of items. So it's up to you if you want to accept the defect or not. I have certain defect deal breakers like the front flap not being straight, if there's a crease or scratch in the front, and no deflated quilts. If you know your deal breakers, that can help you make a decision if you want to buy that defective item or not. Another thing to note is that Chanel has regular price increases every year. So recently, on an average, the classic flaps go up about twice a year, but there was a year that it actually went up three times. Some items go up in price once a year, and some go up in price in like one and a half to two years. It just depends on what Chanel does. And the price increase in percentage varies by year and the item, and it's just part of life. I heard when the price increase rumors happen that clients flock to the store, and people try to buy the bags before the price increase, and people also buy right after the price increase. So it doesn't look like the dramatic price increases are hurting Chanel. There's speculation that right before the price increase happens, that suddenly the item that'll go up in price is unavailable. But then the day of the price increase, or a few days after that, Chanel magically has stock. I can't confirm or deny that. My mindset is if a wishlist item is available and it doesn't have any of my defect deal breakers, I buy it. There's no point in getting hung up on the increased price as this same item, if it comes out next year or in the future, will be more. So I want to answer the question, how does the price increase affect me? For me, it's simple. I buy less bags per year. For this year, if my budget is for three bags, next year, I will probably budget for two bags. Or 
Next year, if I want to buy three bags, I will reduce my budget for shoes, accessories, or ready-to-wear. Or I can sell bags I don't use anymore to help me fund for the next Chanel bag. So we just talked about how it's hard to buy at the store. So maybe you want to go the pre-loved route. The next point I want to share with you is that some Chanel bags are more expensive on the pre-loved market. That sounds pretty crazy too, right? Hard to get items and any items where there's a bigger demand than the supply, the price is higher on the pre-loved market. When I say the pre-loved market, it's referring to any luxury item you buy not straight from the boutique or the store. Not all pre-loved items are used. Some are actually brand new. You may know about the pearl bag phenomenon that happened in 2019. This mini bag retailed for $4,900 in 2019, which is pricey for a mini bag, which retails for $3,500 at that time, but a great price for a pearl bag. And I've seen this bag sold in the pre-loved market for as much as between $16,000 and $22,000. So this is the price that it was sold for. And I saw that on Vestier Collective, but I couldn't grab this screenshot because I guess they don't show bags sold over a year anymore. This is an extreme case. In most cases, Chanel bags are listed anywhere from 1K to more over retail. And when I say retail price, that's referring to the price at the store. So recently I bought this small Chanel heart bag from the store and the retail price was $3,400. And so far, I've seen this sell at Vestiaire Collective between $5,000 and about $6,000. And currently, the highest price listed on this item on Vestiaire is over $8,700. I just want to let you know that I'm not interested in selling this bag. This is for my own personal use. But that is the reality of the pre-love market. So the last point that I want to make today is that there is less and less pre-love Chanel deals as in the past. I used to define a deal as something that has minimal wear and 30% off the current retail price or less. My new definition of a deal today is if it has minimal wear and it's 10% off the current retail price or less. At the end of 2019 and during 2020, I did buy quite a bit because the deals were just too good to pass up and I will be revealing them one by one on this channel. In the last 12 months, there was no deal that was too good to pass up. So recently, I've been buying more at the store because the bags I desire are more pricey on the pre-loved market. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.